Hey guys, how's it going today? Welcome to another MMA Diary. It's uh, it's downtime in the world of MMA. Recently, we saw Matt Mitrione, this boy here, fight last weekend. But this weekend, we ain't got shit. It's 4th of July weekend in the USA, and there's no fights to be seen. So we are going to recap the Bellator Dynamite 2 card, while we also look forward to um, the Thursday the Thursday Rafael Dos Anjos Eddie Alvarez card I'll preview that shit and um, yeah we'll go over there's a bunch of fight announcements this week so we got a bunch of fight announcements to go over uh, we have some sad news to go over again which seems to be happening a lot um, and just a couple a uh, couple news and notes here so, the sad news, let's cover that first off. Uh, Ex-UFC fighter Ryan Jimmo uh, was killed last week. Uh, June 26th, I believe it was, he, uh, Ryan Jimmo got ran over in the parking lot of a club in Canada. I think in Edmonton. Uh, and, yeah, he got ran over by a pickup truck. And nobody, uh, nobody knew who did it. And then, like, on June 29th, I want to say, two, two guys got arrested for, uh, the one dude was obviously driving, and the other dude was accessory to, after the fact, to murder after the fact. Um, apparently there was some argument going on in, in the, at a club, and then, uh, they ran him over after that, but yeah, terrible, terrible news. Uh, this is the second fighter in this year to be killed in a hit-and-run accident. It's kind of scary. Uh, yeah, I feel really bad for that, for Jimmo, for his family. Um, he seemed like a nice dude, like, on the MMA Diary, Ariel Hawani gave him a nice little eulogy, and they played one, one of his interviews. He seemed like a good dude. Um, I mean, I, it's, the fight of the week this week is, uh, I'm gonna dedicate it to Ryan Jimmo. And uh, have it have uh, the the Ryan Jimmo Anthony Peroche fight. Well, it was uh, Jimmo's debut in the UFC, and I believe it was in front of a Canadian crowd. He's he's from Canada. I didn't exactly look up the event, but um, yeah, Ryan Jimmo knocks out Anthony Peroche in seven seconds, tying him for the fastest knockout in UFC history. Uh, yeah, R.I.P. Ryan Jimmo very depressing story and we're a lot of MMA fighters passed away this year you got Kevin Randleman uh, Kimbo Slice that kid out of American Top Team or was it the Black Zillions I'm not even I don't even remember anymore it's, it's sad that I can't remember that guy's name but uh yeah bad year for MMA fighters um getting into tragic accidents or uh, having sudden health issues. Anyways, let's try and transition away from that. Uh, Bellator 157 Dynamite 2 was the last weekend. I didn't see it live. I saw it after the fact, so I fast-forwarded through a bunch of shit. I didn't watch any of the kickboxing. I saw the uh, the vine of uh, Schilling getting knocked out with that back fist. That was pretty devastating. But, uh, yeah... McFarlane, Ilya Maliki, I forget her name now, McFarlane, fighting Rebecca Ruth. Uh, I picked McFarlane, and that's that's who won the fight. Um, Ruth is sort of like a cult hero for the way she fights. She sort of gets up gets up in people's faces like Cyborg does, sort of goes after him, throws down, um, sort of able to, to keep the fight going her way the way she wants it, but McFarlane was uh, able to neutralize all of that and just sort of clung on to her and ground her down and she ended up getting the submission good for her uh, that was a 125 pound fight so both if um, UFC ever wants to start poaching some of that 125 talent um, that McFarlane seems like a good wow McFarlane seems like a good uh, good person to try and get Right hand. Oh, 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 o
We'll just stand back up. Oh shit. Yeah, just stand back up. Back up to his feet. I knocked that dude down with just a fucking jab. Almost caught him. Excellent jab by Lewis. Good leg kick. They are exchanging here, Mike. Uh, also, Matt Mitrione versus that uh, Samuna Tafata guy. Uh, Matt Mitrione got tagged hardcore right away in the opening of the fight. Like, bam, knocked down. And then uh, somehow he was able to recover, get back up, and he ended up finishing the fight. It was pretty impressive. I did not expect Mitrione to come back like that. I said... I was uh, watching, I went to a movie that, that Friday, or was that, yeah, that was Friday. I went to a movie called The Shallows, which I recommend uh, not as a movie theater movie, maybe like a cable movie, if you're interested. I wouldn't pay money for it, necessarily, like real money. But it was entertaining enough. Anyways, when I got done with the movie, I went to a bar and I checked Twitter. I, want, I didn't want to... I didn't want to um, spoil the card for myself. Like I wanted to see where they were at, and I saw that Mitrione got Mitrione got dropped, like in all letters, capital letters, by one of the MMA fighting people. And I was like, "Oh shit, Mitrione lost!" And I sort of smiled to myself, like, "Fucking UFC guys cannot catch a break here with all these uh, Bellator fights." But um. Yeah, he ended up coming back, so I was I was surprised when I saw him come back and finish the fight. Uh, apparently, in the post-fight interview, like I said, I fast-forwarded through all that stuff. In the post-fight interview, Mitrione, apparently, he was asked, like, how did you recover when you got dropped early in the first? And Mitrione's like, oh, I got dropped? I didn't even know I got dropped. I don't remember anything. He's like, oh, well, uh... Explain the finish. How did you? What did you end up doing? He's like, I don't even remember what happened, man. I just don't remember. And then they then they announced his next fight was gonna be in like three weeks in London. And it's like your dude can't remember anything that happened in the fight, and you're gonna go ahead and announce his next fight that's only three weeks away. And then, I guess, Mitrione came out and he uh, did commentary for the Glory Kickboxing, which I was not expecting. I thought, I don't know, it was just weird, like the whole thing. Mitrione, get that money, bro, but try and make sure that you're okay. Oh, shit. Um, I picked Mitrione in that fight, so that's 2-0 so far, but then I decided to get cute and I went for the upset special here with Patricky Pitbull and Michael Chandler. That was stupid, that was a stupid call. Uh, the fight didn't last too long. I don't think Chandler got hit once. He, uh, Chandler... One of the cleanest knockouts you'll ever will see. Just pop, pow, right on his chin, right on Patricky's chin. And he went out hardcore style, like bad. And then Michael Chandler's getting all excited. And then Patricio Pitbull, he comes up on the, the cage side and gets yelling in his face like, I want you, I want you. Like he wants to fight him. It's like, yo, you're a 145 or this is 155. You're gonna get your ass killed if your brother can even last around. But um, yeah, I was really surprised the way uh, oh shit, I was really surprised how fuck how clean that shot was that he got him with. Um. Yeah, good for Michael Chandler. He's the new 155-pound champion. Meet the new champion, same as the old champion, except uh, the old champion never lost his belt. Ah, I don't know what I was trying to go for there. Like, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, because um, Michael Chandler was the old boss until Will Brooks beat him up. 
and then Will Brooks never lost his title. Shit. Um, yeah, and then the main event of the night was Rampage Jackson versus uh, Satoshi Ishii. That fight wasn't exactly the most entertaining fight, but I gotta, I gotta say, I got respect for Ishii. Some of those takedowns were slick as hell. I know he's a judo Olympic gold medalist, so he would know a thing or two about trips, but man, he just looks slick. And I love... You know, people hate on John Fitch and shit, and I can understand. People want to see finishes. Like, people like Ishii and uh, Fitch, they don't necessarily go for the finishes if they're fighting high-level competition. They sort of just go in there and sort of grind out to get that victory. And I sort of appreciate that style. Like, I know I know that Rampage is getting pissed, like, Gil would stand and trade, but that's not Ishii's style. Ishii went in there and he tried to do what he could to get the victory for himself. Yeah, I thought he won, kind of, but uh, someone, one of the judges gave the fight 30-27 for Ishii, which is just a travesty because um, there's no way Ishii lost that first round. Oh my goodness. But, uh, you know, Rampage was able to get some dirty boxing in there every once in a while, hold him up against the cage, get that shit done. But uh, not a lot of not a lot of activity. Rampage looked pretty bad. Like, his body looked bad. I just don't think he took this fight very seriously. I don't think he took this whole thing very seriously. Because from his interview with Ariel Hawani on the MMA Hour two weeks ago, I think it was, he's just like, yo, man, I've just been having fun in the gym. Trying to get back into why I love this sport. And it didn't seem like he was actually uh, like training too hard. So, Oh, shit. That's right. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so not a great card. There wasn't even that many announcements during that whole fight that I can remember. I mean, they had a Benson Henson Fender Benson Henderson interview, which was nice. But yeah, there was that, that fight was kind of a dud, if you ask me. I don't really know. Kind of sucked. Yeah, a bit of a snooze fest, but yeah, whatever. Um. Let's see here. So, a couple new, a couple notes here, a couple news items. Michael Chiesa out of the fight versus Tony Ferguson on July fucking 13th, I think it is. Uh, he has something wrong with his back, so he had to pull out. So now they got a scrub for Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson cannot catch a break when it comes to opponents. Habib pulls out every goddamn time. Then Tony pulls out once. And then now Tony's like... Ripping on Habib for fighting a short notice replacement, and now he's fighting a short notice replacement. He's out of the main event. New main event is Michael McDonald versus uh, Lineker, I believe. Um, blah, 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 blah. BJ Penn suspended six months for IV. That whole IV uh, thing that went down. But uh, it's retroactive to when he was first uh, caught with it, so his suspension's up in September, so... Um, I, yeah, he, he'll be eligible for that New York card if they want to put him on there. Uh, another news item here. Sage Northcutt signed to an individual Reebok sponsorship. So now he's getting that big big bucks from Reebok. As well as the UFC, which I just do not understand why that kid is getting so much money. Irish Joe Duffy. I think they have a guy named Mitch Clark on here. Wait, who's that? Hey, Benil Darius. Hmm. 
No, no Mitch Clark. We'll just have these two guys fight it out. Okay, and now let's get back into it here. So yeah, Sage North Cut. Getting some big money from Reebok. I just don't not understand. Like, that dude, he's a good-looking dude, and he's, he's like, sculpted out of clay, but... I I think I I want to see a couple more fights from him against some competition that's actually sort of legitimate. No offense to Brian Barberina. Brian Barberina is looking like he could be a serious dude, but um, let's start like in uh, Enrique Marin. I think is his opponent at 200. Like I don't really know about that guy. I guess he was a tough finalist, tough Latin America finalist. So maybe he's legit, but uh, I don't know. I just don't think that. He should be getting that kind of money right away. Um, uh, John Jones has uh, he wants Big John McCarthy out of the fight, out of the ref, out of the ref position for his fight against DC at 200. Um, this might just be like DC trying to. The last time they were gonna fight, DC tried to get Herb to uh, get pulled from the fight because he thought that there was something wrong with. Uh, Herb Dean refereeing their fight, so maybe Jones is just doing the same thing with Big John McCarthy. I have no clue, really. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but he seems serious about it. Man, I'm tired. Uh, CM Punk said that he could make a title run. He could see himself uh, getting a title shot, going on a title run if he was to win three or four in a row. But, um, people made this into a big story, but he was more or less just talking about his frame of mind, like, how he approaches things, like, he tries to be positive about shit. Look at that. Banner Saga is ready to start. So I, I don't have any problem with it. I mean, it, if, if, if he's honest with himself and he's honest with us, he's probably not gonna say something like that, but I don't have a problem with it. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, BJ Penn, speaking of BJ Penn, he wants to fight GSP and GSP's return fight to finish off their trilogy, but from what I remember, BJ Penn lost both of those fights against, against, um, GSP. Yeah, he lost both of those fights. Oh yeah, uh, UFC 190, or UFC 94. They fought for uh, one. They fought for the 170 pound title. That was the that was the title versus title match. BJ was the 155 champion, and GSP was 170. And GSP just smothered BJ and dominated him. And BJ didn't even answer the bell in the fifth round. He got he got owned so bad. So I don't know why GSP would come back to fight BJ Penn. It's not like their trilogy is very or their previous two fights were very legendary. So. I mean, BJ's just trying to get that, that shine, but it's not working out for him. <laughs> it's really not worked out for him in his, in his comeback. His attempted comeback, anyways. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So let's get into the fight announcements. There's a lot of them. I don't know if I ever mentioned this in my previous ones, but it's been announced for a while. Cody Garbrandt versus Takeya Mizugaki at, at UFC 202. Which is kind of strange because Cody Garbrandt's from Cleveland, so why not put him on the 203 card? You know, sell out some more tickets there. I don't know why they're not doing it, but apparently they want him at 202, so that's a good fight. That'll probably be on the prelims if uh, if, the, if the card stays together because at 202 they also have announced uh, Donald Cerrone versus Rick Story. That's a hell of a fight. 170. I think that's another 170. Yeah, that's another 170 fight, right? No. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, that's 170. Um that's a that's a good fight. Both of those guys can throw a punch. Rick Story can take a punch. Cerrone, he can he can stick it out against lower level competition, people who don't have a belt, but uh I'm excited for it. Um Anthony Rumble Johnson and Glover Teixeira was canceled off the UFC on Fox card in Chicago, but now they moved it back to uh, UFC 202, so we get to see that awesome, that's like an awesome fight. I'm so excited for that fight. That's at 202 as well. Also at 202, Carlos uh, Condit versus Damian Maya. That's an awesome fight. That should be co-main event right there. I mean, you got 
So that's that's just awesome. I'm super excited for that fight. We'll we'll go over the two two card once I finish reading them off here. Um. Also at two o two, Neil Magny versus Dun Young Kim. Dun Dun Young Kim. Dun Young Kim. Ah, whatever. I can't. I'm, I suck at Korean names. That's an awesome fight. And then there's also Tim Means versus Sean Strickland announced at 2-2. And also, there was another fight announced today, Artem Lobov. He's going to be fighting uh, some joker. I think someone from um, the Scrap Pack is he's going to fight. Let me just see if I can pull this up quick here. I probably, probably won't be able to. Uh, da, 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 da. Nope. Oh, I can't. Oh, no. Nope. Here we go. Here we go. Avila versus Lobov. So there you go. I don't know who Avila is, but I think he's from Nate Diaz's camp. Can't be positive though. So here we go. We got Carlo. We got uh, Connor versus Nate. Main event. Co-main event. Carlos Con versus Damian Maya. Third fight, Rumble vs. Glover. Fourth fight, Magni vs. Stone Young Kim. Fifth fight, Cerrone vs. Story. And then Cordy Garbrandt vs. Mizugaki. And the return of the Dirty Bird Tim Means vs. Sean Strickland. I think that's that's an awesome card. That's a really good card. I'm pumped for that. Like, this has been such a good couple of months. Ever since... Well, 190, yeah, ever since 198, it's just been bam, 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 bam. Awesome card after awesome card. Uh, some other fight announcements here. Uh, Jessica I versus Betch Correa at UFC 203 in Cleveland. Jessica I, she's a Cleveland girl, so that's good for her. Uh, also, Lauren Murphy versus newcomer Caitlin Shukoigan. I wrote it very sloppily. So yeah, I, I like Lauren Murphy. Good to see her back. And Tony Ferguson is going to be fighting Vanate, the the short notice replacement. He's eight and zero in, in MMA, and he's a Jackson Winklejohn product. So maybe he can make a big ass statement against Tony Ferguson. I mean, that's that's a hard fight for anyone in the 155 pound division, much less some newcomer. So that'll be interesting. Okay, so the Thursday fight card, the the fight pass card, the uh, Dos Anjos Alvarez card. I'll preview some of the fights I'm looking forward to here. Uh, well, I'll give you my predictions. I don't know about previewing it, but uh, also it's it's free agency. The draft was last Thursday, and now um, free agency opened last night for July 1st. So I'm pretty much all NBA right now. Like that's that's what that's what I got my mind on. So sort of haven't been reading. Or listening to as much uh, stuff, but I think this, this it was a decent show so far, right? Let's just finish it off with predictions, huh? So Medeti Baghdad or versus Medi Baghdad versus uh, John McDessey. I got McDessey. I thought Baghdad was the guy who uh, he wasn't the guy who I thought he was. I, there there must be another dude with the last name Baghdad in UFC, but yeah, John McDessey. I think he'll be able to pull through and get that win. Uh, Mike Pyle versus Alberto Mine... Mino? Mina? I, I have such sloppy writing. I got Mike Pyle. He's the 40-year-old with a mullet. Uh, I would not be surprised if Alberto would, were to win. But uh, Mike Pyle looked good in his last fight. So, then we go into Joe Duffy versus Mitch Clark. I got Duffy in this fight. Because I'm not too familiar with Mitch Clark, but uh, I'm hoping that that should be a fun fight. I mean, Joe Duffy, he got crushed by Dustin Poirier when they fought. Crushed. So who knows if he'll ever be the same after a beating like that? But um, I'm going with Duffy. Alan Joban versus Bilal Muhammad. Uh, 
I think Alan Jilban was supposed to fight somebody else, and then Muhammad was a short notice replacement. I looked at Muhammad's record. He, I don't think he's fought in the UFC before. See, I, all my information just goes in and out. Even if I write it down, I need to be very specific, otherwise I'll just, I'll just forget. But Alan Jilban's a badass. He's a good-looking badass. I think he'll win the fight. I'm going with him. Derek Lewis versus, versus Roy Nelson. This should be one of the fun, funnest fights of the weekend. As long as it ends before uh, the judges. Because if it goes to the judges, that'll be one of the most boring fights. But um, I just I just don't believe in Derek Lewis. Like, I'm sorry. He keeps on knocking dudes out. And he keeps doing that scary-ass celebration. But I just, I just... I don't buy it. I'm going with Roy Nelson. Roy Nelson by devastating knockout. Or... Yeah, Roy Nelson by devastating knockout. Derek Lewis, he gets people down to the ground. He just beats the shit out of them. I'm going to Roy Nelson knocks him out on the feet. And then the... This is actually one of the best fights of the weekend. And there's a lot. A lot of good fights this this coming weekend. Uh, the July 7th, 8th, and 9th fight cards. But, um... Rafael Dos Anjos versus Eddie Alvarez is a very good fight. I have... I, I'm still going back and forth on this, but uh, you know what? I circled this dude, so I'm just going to stick with, with my prediction here. I'm going with Eddie Alvarez. I'm going with the upset pick. Upsets never work out for me. I should just go with who I think is going to win. And I think Rafael Dos Anjos, after beating the shit out of Donald Cowboy Cerrone and Anthony Pettis, uh, he deserves the, the, the uh, benefit of the doubt here when it comes to whenever he fights. But Eddie Alvarez just has that grinder in him, like, he just finds a way to get things done. Like, Cerrone, he beat Alvarez pretty handily, but Alvarez sort of stuck in there and sort of came back after a little while. It was just too late. Um, I'm going to pick Alvarez by decision victory. But... Man, Dos Anjos looked really good against Cerrone and, and Pettis. Like, he looked really, really good. Uh, it's it's going to be one of the best fights of the weekend for, for sure. I'm going to go with the upset pick. I'm going to go with Alvarez. I just think that that dude... He's got some sort of crazy... Crazy will about him. The underground king, as they call him. He'll get it done. He'll get the victory. Okay, so that's that. We got... That fight card previewed. We're going to be coming back next Friday, January 8th. January. I cannot get my months right. I don't know. I must have some sort of fucking dyslexia or something because I just cannot get the words out of my mouth properly. July 9th, 2016. I'll be making another video. I'll be previewing the tough finale card, recapping the July 8th card, and then giving my picks for 200. Um, I already have my fight of the week picked out for next week, so stay tuned for that, I suppose. Also, I'm going to jinx it right now, but thank God the UFC 200 card has stayed together the way it has. The main card is untouched. There was, um, Derek Brunson pulled out. That's a bummer. So I haven't seen that guy in a while, fight in a while. But, uh, yeah, this, these cards have been very, relatively untouched, which is just a nice, nice thing to have, especially on the biggest uh, week, week of the year for the UFC. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm going to let this, this video run here until, uh, you know what, let's just let the fight run out. I was going to end it on half an hour exactly, but um, this fight's almost over. Come on, Duffy, get done. Get done, Duffy. Get done. You're almost there, bro. Joe Duffy, you gotta finish the fight, man. And they go the distance in a spectacular matchup. Ah, you guys don't care, do you? See ya.